If you have not given in our Sunday School offering, we are extending an opportunity for you to give. You can give with any of the three ways that displayed on the screen. Please make sure you mark your amount in the box designated for Sunday School. Thank you and stay tuned. Welcome to Sunday School, all that have joined via live stream. Heavenly Father, prick each heart that we grow spiritually in Jesus' name. Our lesson, Praise with Music, the 15th chapter of Exodus. Songs are prompted by life's ups and downs. A privileged, bougie life prompts classical songs. Intimate relationships prompts love songs. Ghetto life prompts rap songs. Rural life prompts country song. American slavery prompted black gospel songs. After 1776, the United States became a nation. And it was then that the world saw the harshest slavery ever known to humanity. Egypt's brutality towards the Hebrews became a became second to America's brutality towards black folk. The Hebrews once had sustained political capital. Out of jealousy and envy, Joseph's brothers called him a dreamer. Joseph's brothers wanted to kill him. Out of their wicked emotions, they wound up selling him as a slave, and he became the first Hebrew to become enslaved in Egypt. But by grace, Joseph rose to second in command of all Egypt, giving the Israelites sustained political capital. America is jealous and envious towards black folk. Black folk run faster jump higher, dance better, sing great, have a style that drives them wild. I had style that drove some ladies wild. Read into that whatever you want to, but let's move on. Black folks have endurance that make people jealous and envious, which are the wickedest emotions humans have. Cain killed Abel out of jealousy and envy. Jealousy is detected by rudeness and nastiness. If you are mean and nasty to someone for no reason, what are you jealous about? Envy smiles in your face, secretly want to cut you. Envy is like a boot on the neck that limits a person's flow of oxygen. Stay with me, class. I'm driving somewhere. Black folk have never had sustained political capital, even though Barack Obama was president. The Republicans rejected his political platforms, denying black folks of sustained political capital. Whenever black folk get some political capital, Racism always knocked black folk back two or three political steps. Look how Trump reacted with blatant racism towards Obama. Now, Republicans have joined Trump's blatant racism. White folk are displaying fear of black folk. The politics of fear may win elections, but solves no problem. Voter suppression laws are out of fear. 
They is stopping teaching of the brutality of slavery to white folk, calling it critical race theory. But that's not what critical race theory is. Fear prevents America from repenting of the sin of slavery. Pharaoh feared the Hebrew women because they had too many babies. So Pharaoh killed the baby boy, but Moses was spared. Pharaoh's type of fear, white folk have of black Americans. When there's a question about a killing of a black person, black police, pol excuse me, by police officers, police officers always say, I fear for my life. Out of fear, a law enforcement official put a knee boot on the neck of George Floyd, limiting his floor of oxygen, killing him. I said I was driving somewhere. Put a pin here, put a pin, pin this here though. The Bible speaks of God's people as pilgrims passing through to the other side. To the promised land of Canaan. During slavery, black folk were encouraged by those words. They called Canaan freedom land. Might be why people say black people are way too religious. Anyway, the Israelites served the Egyptians for over 400 years. Since the transatlantic slave industry, black folk have suffered white privilege for over 400 years. Black slaves learned Moses' story and at the start of the black church, Moses' story was known among black folk. Our question this morning is what prompted Moses' song giving praise to God and the rest of the people joined Moses' praise with music and dance. But soon after, turned against Moses when their exodus ran out of water. And the first source of water that they came upon at Marah was built to the test. The people rebelled against Moses, but not against God. As of yet, but soon will. Even so, God prompted Moses to throw wood into the water to make it sweet. The wood indicates Jesus' bitter death on the cross. Moses and the Israelites making it through the raging sea indicates Jesus' resurrection. And those who will believe in Christ will be resurrected. Oh, Satan Claus thought he had won, but Death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? A newborn Moses was placed in the water in an ark. Moses, like Noah, long before, was placed in an ark, waterproof with tar and pitch, saving Noah and his family and animals two by two from drowning. And Moses, survived Pharaoh's plot to kill all the Hebrew baby boys. The spiritual person will see the trinity of the ark. The father, the ark, the son, the top, and the spirit, the pit. Now, considering Moses being saved, love and the mother, the instincts of females made a difference. Moses' family saves his life influenced his early childhood development. Mothers raised the children to be somebody. Moses' mother got the chance to, make, to raise Moses, right? Baby brothers, she got the chance because Moses' big sister, Miriam, kept close watch on the ark, seeing that Moses was rescued. And what will become of Moses, a newborn child? Baby sisters, by divine design and God's grace, Miriam's little brother Moses was nurtured by his own mother's milk. 
Because Miriam watched out for her brother. Studying, I learned the mother's milk spiritually means the church. Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, narrates Miriam's good looking out that benefited her brother. Moses nurtured by the mother's milk spiritually. Moses was nurtured by the word of God. I also learned wood and water, cross and baptism were types in the early church. The typology of baptism was Jesus' death on the cross. Indicated by the wood, God prompted Moses to throw into the water. This baptismal typology of the cross was widely known in the early church. The law is built, but the wood, the cross, sweetens that water. Woo! The cross through the Red Sea narrates the story of how to understand and make the law sweet. The Bible narrates a change of leadership. The lawgiver, Moses, hands off to his general, Joshua. If you don't know the narrative, Know that Joshua and Jesus are the same name in the Greek language. Moses, the law, gives way to Jesus, the grace of God. Joshua, a figure, a stand-in for Jesus. Several early Christian writers wrote to that effect. Moses' successor, Joshua, Jesus, led the next generation over the Jordan River. After 40 years of wandering, until that rebellious generation all fell in the desert, the spiritual person will notice the change from the old to the new. Joshua, Jesus, led the cross, hint, hint, the cross over the Jordan River. Jesus leads the next new generation into Canaan that promised land. Black folk called it freedom land. If killed, escaping slavery, black folk hope for eternal life. Spiritually, Canaan is interpreted as heaven. Joshua is interpreted as salvation. Jesus is interpreted he will save his people from sins. Put a pen here. His people mean the people who do not rebel against God. Paul understood this change. The old generation, the Old Testament changed generationally to the New Testament. The rebellious people against the Lord fall in the desert. Spiritually means they fall into hell. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you will see that many people have heard of God. People can see that God controls nature, but many will not acknowledge God. And people who say they know God will be like the Israelites. Even though they knew God, they did not give Jesus thanks. By their own rebellion against the Lord, they fall into hell. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, explains ignorance of God will not be an excuse. The Bible tells us Jesus is the living God who came down and dwelt among people. Pastor Emeritus Thomas told me to see Jesus in the Old and the New Testament. He will say, well, boy, if you don't see Jesus, you messing it up. The law, the Old Testament, we learn we are sinners. The New Testament, we learn Jesus' death upon the cross is God's grace. Remember, God prompted Moses to throw wood into the water. The water indicates the bitterness of the trials of life that are bound up under the power of sin. Understand. Grace lies 
in the wood, the cross that makes the bitter water sweet. Woo! And the virtue that is of the law is our first teacher that Moses led the people out of Egypt. Before the Israelites exodus from the power of sin, Egypt, they must start with lessons in virtue. Right now, the church is where lessons in virtue must start. Moses commanded the Israelites to bar the Egyptians' wealth. After military victories, the winners taste the wealth of the enemy, the spoils of war. The Israelites didn't have no military victory. They were set free from the Egyptian tyrant guided only by Moses' word. Might I think people following Moses should not have the wealth of the Egyptians or should not think the Israelites should have said wealth for their own use. That's what Moses commanded the people to go do. The Israelites did not leave Egypt empty-handed. Moses said, go by the Egyptians' way. No one listening to this will accept the advice of Moses if he told people to go rob the Egyptians. Moses wouldn't be a leader of virtue, but a wrongdoing. The laws that follow from the beginning to the end forbid wrongdoing to one's neighbor or enemy. Jesus said, not only love thy neighbor, but love thy enemy. So what is the truth of the matter? Did the lawgiver Moses, the leader of virtue, command the people to go rob the Egyptians or not? Even if it might seem fair that the Israelites should get paid for their hard labor, their slavery serving the Egyptian enemy, like black folks should get reparation for suffering white privilege, Moses said, take whatever you desire of the Egyptian treasure by the device of telling the Egyptians, let me borrow all the wealth that you have. That will not purify a command of lying and stealing. To borrow and not repay the lender is wrong. A person borrowing things not belonging to them with the intent of not repaying is stealing. Even if you are taking what you think should by right be yours. If you would, I plead that we discern this morning. The higher meaning, the spiritual meaning is right, but it's tight. Moses commands the people participating through virtue from slave into a free life to equip yourself with the wealth of worldly learning from the people who are strangers to the faith. The people who do not believe in God, but beautify themselves with the things the world provides. The God of virtue, Moses' command is to borrow from wealthy Egyptians the things of moral character, natural philosophy and math, astronomy and engineering, dialect and whatever else that they, that the believers outside the church seek. Skills learned in the world will become useful to beautify the divine temple, the church, with the riches of reason. The Israelites who treasured up this wealth willfully gave it over to Moses. When Moses started fashioning, building, and beautifying the temple, to the pattern God showed him up on the mountain. People gave free will offerings without someone begging to get to dedicate their talents, their treasure, their simple labors, their knowledge and skills for the construction of the holy place. Exodus chapter 25 verse 1 says, the Lord told Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions of all whose hearts are moved to offer them. God accepts from those who give cheerfully and not grudgingly. Give who they are, 
what they have for the adorning of God's house. It's possible to see this take place even now. Right now, people bring to the church their skills learned in the world as some kind of a gift. Praising God with the wealth of the world. They're learning in music, to engineering, the skills and all the arts adorning the church. Folks, come not as someone fake. Because I tell you, consciences do bear witness against unclean hearts. And without pure hearts and clear consciences, it's impossible to please God. Praise God with sound minds and cheerful hearts. Deceitful hearts have darkness at its harbor, which stinks in the nostrils of God. Cheerful hearts are sweet aroma, having light at its harbor, guiding people to the shore of virtue safely. Moses was guided to a divine passageway provided by God. The cross through the raging waters. To the shore on the other side, that same raging water drowned the misplaced passion, evil desires, and all the strength of the Egyptians. And the Israelites saw him lying dead on the shore of the other side of the Red Sea. The spiritual person may see to make the cross safely through the sea indicates resurrection from the dead. The hope laid up for those who by faith follow Moses, the lawgiver, as an example of virtue. Class, spiritually, that is to say, follow Jesus, who is God. American black slaves coming out of slavery started the black church with Moses as a guy. So whenever people get through bumping their gums about black folk, being way too religious, they don't know black folks' story. Even some black folks, young and old, don't know their own story. But I want the world to know black folk doing slavery started following Moses and an example of virtue. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5 says, Moses was certainly the most faithful, virtuous, in all God's house. Moses was the example and the revelation God will make known in the future. Meaning, others will follow Moses' example. Some people will have a little light, a virtuous life, that light up the way to the harbor on the other side of wickedness safely, making it safe to the other side is certainly a reason to praise with song, music, and dance. Think of black gospel songs as sounds of cheerful hearts making way through the raging sea, troubles of life, by the providence of God, who in his mighty power over nature provides a divine passageway to the harbor of virtue safely. Moses got to that harbor on the other side of wickedness. That's the reason must Moses busted out singing and Miriam and the women busted out with tambourines and dancing. And after witnessing, God used power over nature to fight against Pharaoh and his army is the reason why the rest of the Hebrew men couldn't help but to join the women praising God with music and dance. Read Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 through 31. God thought the battle using the sea, pillar of cloud, the wind, day and night, dry ground, and Moses. Then the people believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. God's grace, mercy, and love saves us from the troubled waters of life. Our Red Sea, class, the same grace, mercy, and love drowns the desires of evil, the passions of lust, and the cares of the world. 
our Egypt, who is a furious enemy, washes up dead on the harbor of virtue. Per the 15th chapter of Acts. Hallelujah. Folks, Moses and Aaron were witness to Pharaoh's wickedness in a high place. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord in the evil of anger, spiritual wickedness in a high place. Pharaoh pursued the Hebrews and drowned in the water. That's why after passing through that same raging water, the trials of life, Moses busted out with the song of deliverance. Moses knew the Lord fights our spiritual battle against the wickedness in a high place. Black gospel songs were songs of freedom from humans enslaving other humans. The spiritual wickedness in a high place produced by slavery. Black gospel songs not only give praise to God from freedom from slavery, but from sin also. Black folk doing a harsh slavery got hold of the good book, the Bible, learned of Moses delivering the Israelites, then connected Moses' triumph to black gospel songs. Like sweet low, swing low, sweet chat. Slaves hearing this song, men get ready to escape. The song is about a band of angels taking a person to freedom. Sweet chariot is code for underground railroad. Then there's Wade in the water, taught American black slaves to hide in the water and make it to safety. The song gave black folk coded directions to freedom. Folk, there's also amazing grace written by the captain of a slave ship. By grace, black folk had a ship to freedom. A ship is an ark, waterproof with tar and pits that long ago saved Noah, his family, and the animals two by two. Save Moses, a newborn baby, from evil favor. The Ark of the Covenant, spiritually, is the blood of the covenant. Read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 through 31. These verses explain the covenant of the blood. The blood that reaches the highest mountain, that flows to the lowest valley. It will never Never lose his power. Now, class, amazing grace. At the first, way back in the day, it was played only on the black keys of the piano, giving it a sorrowful vibe. This black gospel song is now a staple at churches, often sung at funerals. Now it is played on the white and black keys. In the black church, it is a song of celebration at funerals. Remember the senseless gun violence that was fueled by racism? Dylan, Storm, Ruth took the life of nine innocent people at Mother Emanuel Church. Remember at the funeral of the Reverend Clemente Pinkney, Barack Obama busted out with the amazing grace. Remember the song put black folk in a celebratory mood like Moses, Miriam, and the rest of the Israelites were in on the other side of the sea, the other side of spiritual wickedness in a high place, having the hope of Canaan, that promised land. Again, in conclusion, black folks doing slavery called Canaan, that land that was promised, they called it Freedom Land. Folks, hear me when I say the black church called funerals home going celebration. In spite of the grief of death, the black church has long believed in resurrection. The hope of resurrection is the motus operandi of black folks' endurance. 
that make people jealous and envious, no matter how America enslaved black folks, no matter of the racism, no matter how racism tried to stop black folks from rightfully voting, no matter how law enforcement officials murder black folk, no matter how America has not wanted black folk to be educated, America now wants to keep white folk ignorant of the cruelty done to black folk, just in law, stopping the teaching of the history of slavery, calling it critical race theory. Again, that is not what critical race theory is. White folk don't know black folk story. People talking about we're way too re re excuse me, way too religious. I say whenever they get through bumping their gums, and no matter the jealousy and envy, the black church knows that in the midst of spiritual wickedness in high places, all the evil of racism, we can sing. Why should we feel discouraged? Why should a horse feel lonely, longing for heaven's home when Jesus is our portion? What a friend is he? His eye is on the sparrow, and he watches, watches over us. That's why black folk can sing and be happy. Sing because we're free. We know his eye is on the sparrow. And when we get old, and the building starts to leak, and our souls got to move. The old building keeps on leaning. I tell you, and our souls got to move. We know we got a building not made by hand. And before this time, another year, we may be dead and gone. But before we go, we just got to let you know we be living in brand new homes. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Somebody type amazing grace in the comments. I was, was lost, but, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Through, 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 through many storms, but grace brought me safe, safe, right on home. Class, how about the word to these black gospel songs? I pray y'all know the, the, the same old grace called it God's amazing grace. In the midst of life's storm, Jesus is with you. I pray you tell the world that it's grace, amazing grace, that brought you so safe, so safe, so safe this far. And it won't be nothing else, no it won't, nothing else but that same old grace that will lead you right on, right on home. I pray you join us this morning for our morning worship at 10 o'clock. Do you want to lift up your voice with glory, hallelujah? Say, Lord, keep me near the cross that my wretched soul will find rest beyond the river. Wonderful rest, everlasting rest. I pray everyone under the sound of my voice get that sanctified rest. No more sickness, no more crying, no more dying. Just, just beyond the river. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen.